Hey everyone, it's your girl again, Akeisha, back with another video. And in this video, I want to talk about outsourcing. It is so important when you are a small business and a small team, or if you are a one-person business trying to grow to two and three and four, it is key that you outsource some of the things that you are not good at. So I'm going to use my company as that example because I have too many small businesses trying to do everything and then they're not good at anything. And then, or you'll have people want to hire you to do everything when that's not your area of expertise. And so you have to put those processes and procedures in place so that way you're not overextending yourself. And then therefore you're building someone else's business and neglecting your business. Because many times, uh, many small business owners don't know how to do, to be a business owner, a CEO, executive. And you notice, I follow people who have done it, who have um, exceeded the standard, who has been building a business. And I look at the patterns. I look at the trends. And the Jeff Bezos, the Facebook, all of them, the Bill Gates, and many of the... Uh, contractors that I follow, the federal contractors who's big in the space started off with one person teams, but they knew in order to get wealth and to generate a sustaining business, they had to bring on strategic partners. And these strategic partners are the people that's going to help you do your job better. That way you can focus on your strategic uh, vision and your plans. Even the large organizations have a strategic strategic plan. And that's why when I start my coaching and consulting with clients, the first thing I want to know is what all the tasks are. That I'm doing a performance work statement, a scope of work or service agreement so we can know who's doing what. Are um, I'm going to be doing this, you're going to be doing this. And if they go out of the scope of work, then you need to invoice. You'll send that invoice, letting them know, hey, this is out of scope. Um, if you would like for me to perform that service, then just pay that invoice and then I'll, I will hire someone to do that work for you. I'm very transparent in my consulting agreement with my clients because I want them to know what it is that I do, but I also want them to know what it is that I do not do. So I can focus on doing what I'm good at and that's business development, capture management and proposal writing. You'll have people asking you to do, well, can you do my events planning? No, I can't do that. That's not what I'm good at. I'm good at business development, capture management, and proposal writing. Those are the things that I'm good at. And any time that you take away from that, if you say yes to that, that you're not good at, you're saying no to the things that you are good at. And I, I heard that great quote. I think it was from Dr. D. Martini. I love following him. He taught me so many good things about doing what you're good at, focusing on your passion, and learning to stay in your wheelhouse. If it's not your wheelhouse, don't do it because then you're not going to love to do it. It's not going to be easy for you to do. It's not your passion. And I've done the thing that I didn't love to do. And then I learned to love it. You know, like going in into military because I wanted a better life for my family. So, yes, I use that to get started. And then, of course, I've been in, what, 21 years. So I'm, evidently I must have liked it enough. Right. But it wasn't the I'm going to do this forever. This is not my passion. It's something I wanted to do and I wanted to serve my country. It was a win win. They were helping me, teaching me a skill, giving me um, craft. Um, direction, teaching me op orders, teaching me how to plan, be strategic, how to, and then who would have thought it that one day I will be a command sergeant major. And then I'm leading the troops and I'm advising my commanders, my old fives, my old six, uh, one stars, two stars. You know, I never seen that, but I set out to do a thing. And then I learned how to do that thing very well. So if the thing was to be a soldier, then I learned all it took to be an excellent soldier, to be in the top 10% or the 1% as, as they call it. So what I'm teaching small businesses owners how to be um, exceptional business owners to build a business that they love and, and they 
enjoy coming to and not building another job, another employee role relationship. No, we got into starting our businesses because we wanted that flexibility. We wanted the work-life balance. Yes, sometimes at the beginning, building that business is not work-life balance. But if you know how to put it all together, you can design a life that you enjoy, that you love, and you love working, and you love teaching and training. And that's what I've done. I've built a, a life that I love. I've been, I'm able to live my dreams. I'm able to work with the um, best clients ever, you know, and I'm able to teach because my passion is teaching, training, mentoring, because I've always wanted that. So I became the thing that I wanted. I wanted someone to help me along the path. I wanted someone to, oh, no, you ain't got to do it that way. You can do it this way. And then I made a choice. I'm going to go that way. And because when I was coming up, I didn't have those things. I worked harder, stronger, faster. So that way I can empathize. I know what it takes to build a business. I know how I was able to release those things and to really focus. So to get right into the video, all right, outsourcing is one of our strategic moves we have to do as a small business. And that was one of the things I had to do so I could grow my consulting company. So the first thing I outsourced was my bookkeeping uh, because I didn't like it. I thought I did. I wanted to do it. I thought I could manage it, but I kept getting behind. And so because I was spending 10 to 20 hours to just doing bookkeeping, catching up, that was taken away from my core service, which was business development, capture management, proposal writing. So I outsourced that. And that been the best decision I ever did. And okay, then we have some of us saying, oh, I can't do that because I don't have the money. Yes, you can. Go find a freelancer. Go find someone on Fiverr. Go find someone on Upwork and then negotiate with that person. Hey, I'm brand new with the business. I only have about 10 to 20 transactions a month. Is there any programs or, or offerings that you have that can assist me? And, I, and I'll get you everything you need so they can do their job. And then that one thing is off your plate. And now you can focus. Oh my God, when I did that, got me a bookkeeper, that was the best thing I could ever do because now all I had to do is create that shared folder, upload those documents for my bookkeeper so she can do her job. And she loved me and I loved her because we both were doing what we were supposed to do. And then the taxes. You know, I did my taxes for so many years. I went to H&R Block and became a tax preparer. I learned how to do all those things because I just wanted to know the basic concepts, but I didn't want to do it. So the next thing I did was got me a tax preparer. I'm not doing any taxes because as you grow, things are going to get more complicated. So you need a subject matter expert to deal with that complexity. You could be put leaving money on the table. You could be doing so many things. And then you're not getting all your tax credits. You're missing your depreciation. You need an expert. So next you need to be getting rid of that tax. Then the payroll. Oh, that became such a headache for me. Oh my goodness, hell in that payroll. So then I got another service, uh, the Gusto. <laughs> so they can do all my uh, payroll. They can do all my financial reporting and uh, those quarterly payments you have to do for employees and all of that. And they handle that for you. So you can use whatever ADP, whatever you want. But I, I chose with a software that was easy, uh, small business um, friendly, and they worked with me. So I use those who work with me. If they're not working with me, then I'm not working with them. I want a win-win situation. And I I want people to work with me, so therefore I work with people. I want um, prime contractors other uh, to, to look at me as a well-established subcontractor because I love being a subcontract subcontractor. I don't have to be the prime. I don't mind being in a support role. I Actually, I love being in a support role because that takes some of the stress and the burden off of me. And some people do well with stress. Some people do not. Or some people just treasure their peace. And I am one of those people that treasure my peace because I know what happens when you don't have peace. Then there's chaos, um, discord, and 
mental frustration. Then you see people having nervous breakdowns and strokes. It messes with your health. And I wanted to be very conscious of my health because I'm one of those people. I, I feel like I'm going to live 125 because I want to be there for my grandchildren, my great grandchildren. I want to teach them the things that I didn't have. You know, so that's why I'm passionate about this. Okay. Then next, you want to outsource that administrative task. Administrative task that that is not your core competency. So that needs to be outsourced, whether it be in house or you outsource it. So you get an employee to come in, and all they do. You don't have to start off with twenty hours, or you can start off with five hours a week. When I first got started, I started off with five hours a week because that was what was in the budget. So how you know is because you plan. And I did the business plan. I got a counselor from the Apex Accelerator, formerly the Maryland PTAC. And my counselor helped me to do those things, to separate, to um, outsource. And I'm just paying it forward. I'm teaching you the things that I was taught when I was building my business. So I got those things out of my way. I trained my um, assistant to do those tasks. And you can't expect them to come in knowing how to do everything. You have to build your training library, your database to train your team. If you don't train your team, how do you expect them to know? They don't just come in knowing. Even, even if they've done it a hundred times, every business is unique. Every business has its own way of doing things. So I am passionate about this because we have to get the word out. We have to educate and train our small business so they can be proficient. Okay, so then I outsource that. Now the IT support, uh, because you don't want to build all this infrastructure, have all these other things. Um, via if you're going to do it in house, outsource it and then just give them access. But it's critical that you protect that content, have someone going in, updating your system, doing all the maintenance, troubleshooting. Uh, one time I got a malware, and it, I was so thankful that I had um, a team to go to to get that off of my system because, um, Large primes don't want to work with us because we don't have these things in place. And then so we get a virus and then we pass it up to them. And then they have so much data and intellectual property they have to protect. So you're thinking about yourself and not your customer. No, you have to think about yourself. Protect yourself so you're protecting your customer's content. You're protecting your customer's intellectual property. That is our role as a subcontractor is to protect our client who we are servicing. And see, most small business can't afford to hire people on full time. They just can't do it. Their budget doesn't allow for it at the beginning. So that's why we created our offering for small businesses. That's what we cater to the small businesses, teaching them, growing them um, after they have come from the Apex Accelerator or the Small Business Development Center because they have a foundation. And I provide the free content for you on the YouTube channel, on the LinkedIn, on my website. So you can use that all that free content so you can save that capital to pay yourself and your team. Those are the things you need to focus on paying yourself and paying your team. So that takes away the anxiety and then you can focus on growing your business. Because I'm telling you, once you have that capital, it relieves the stress and then you really come up with ideas because you're in a zone of flow. You're flowing in your passion. You don't have to worry about payroll. You don't have to worry about getting paid because you've built that business to sustain itself. So now you can work on strategies, um, different ways to scale and grow your business. You're going to have that personal development. Okay. So now that you have your IT, now you need to do about your marketing. I love doing my own blog post writing. I love doing all of my own content because I have a passion. I have I know this um, area. All I need is a person to come in to upload my content, to manage my content, so that way I can focus on writing. My thing is writing and research. I love researching, writing, um, looking how I can make it better, 
constant improvement, constant, um, okay, so we did it analyzing, okay, we did it this way. Can we possibly make it better? That's where I love it. That's where I am good at. So I'm not, I'm not good at uploading no content. I'm not good at going out here managing all this other these different platforms because there's several different platforms. Some people love LinkedIn. Some people love YouTube. Some people love um, Facebook. If I spent all my time on that, I wouldn't be able to provide my clients with customer 100% customer service. So you got to think about that as well. Now the legal services, you got to protect yourself. Not everybody is for you. You have a lot of people out there, they say they're for you, but they're really not. They're really trying to, I don't know, it's not malicious, or maybe it's the way they were brought up or anything. Protect yourself. It is important to have legal services. And so I've been watching a lot of um, Neil McDonald's LinkedIn lines, and he put together a wonderful resource of lawyers. So you can go in there, save that time, have your assistant go in there, pull them all, put them in a spreadsheet, and then reach out to those individuals and see if they, get up their pricing. See, can you, if are they in your budget? If they're not, you just keep looking. If you can't find them off of that, then go on upward. Go on Fiverr because you have freelancers out there who are getting through school and they need someone to just work with them and give them a chance. You wanted someone to give you a chance, so give them a chance. You know, everybody wants the expert, but they don't want to pay the expert price. Well, you know what? Get those promising, the ones with potential. In the military, we're taught to promote with potential. You know, do they have the potential to become who you want them to be? Well, then give them that chance. And that way, it's a win-win, okay? They're new, they're, they're hot, they're ready. They just don't have the experience. Will you take that risk? Will you assume some of the risk of hiring that individual? Because they're giving you at a uh, fraction of the cost and they're in your budget, but you're protecting yourself. It's better than having nothing. You know, when I went out there looking for a book coach because I had a passion to give content to my audience. So when I was looking out there, I had found a book coach who was brand new to the platform, but they had so much content. They had the depth. They had the understanding. Um, that person resonated with my style and they could understand my message that I had and the jargon, you know, because I'm contracting. I, I, I tend to talk more contracting and not playing English. Well, this person I mean, it was a godsend. They showed me how to talk plain English and like, no, don't say it like that. They won't understand what you're trying to say. Talk to them in plain English so that they understand exactly what you're saying and it's going to resonate with them and then get them from point A to move them to the point B. So they don't know anything about government contracting. So now you want them to learn about contracting and then win contracts. You know, you have to tell them in plain English or you're going to confuse them more. And I could understand when I reflected back when I was working at the Apex Accelerator and working with my clients that sometimes I tend to speak too much of the professional language, you know, of the contracting. I need to bring it down a little bit, you know, kind of not. Uh, it's just like us when we use our acronyms in the military and people don't understand us. You know, I had to learn how to speak that talk. Oh, I apologize if this video is a little too long today. You could just break it up, watch about 10 to 15 minutes, and then come back and uh, really watch the rest of the video. Be I just had this passion in my heart to get this information out because I keep looking for where are the gaps? Why are we not succeeding as small business owners? What is hindering us? And we are hindering ourselves because we're trying to do everything. So every time I, I've learned when I have something heavy on me that I go and implement immediately because there's someone else out there struggling with the same thing and it may resonate with them and then get them unstuck so they can keep moving, generating that wealth and then once they have that capital, then they can go in and hire people and bring in the people, the subject matter experts. But don't slip on your interns. These are people that are going to school for this expertise. Start off with your interns. 
that is a great way to get them experience that they need so they can start building their resume and then you have that expertise that you need so you can scale and grow your business and then you can focus more okay so we have to think outside the box we have to because that is the only way we scale a small business then the hr i knew i didn't want to do any hr um that's not my area of expertise so then i went out at a networking event and i was just talk, talking to an individual and they happen to be an hr expert so that's a connection i made now look now we're going to talk with building either you're going to build it in-house or you or you're going to do outsource it. well i didn't want to build it in-house i wanted to outsource the hr department like the recruitment uh and then what access do i need to give this person so they can do their job you understand what i'm saying because we have to protect our proprietary information too so then that means you have to think about how are you going to secure all your proprietary information or are you going to just let, let them do that one piece the recruit me bring them in and then um we can go through a series of things but all that happens because you built those relationships you was at the networking event and then the market research i hired a market research team because i knew i wanted a data uh, specialist who did nothing but um data mine for me going out there um you know scraping the information bringing the information to me so i could make decisions and form decisions i do everything by data I do nothing on just whims and and oh or a happenstance or without proof points to back that up. That's proposal writing because we you tell the people I'm an expert at doing it. Okay, why are you an expert? Because you've been worked with over 250 clients, 350 clients, a thousand clients at that area of expertise. What makes you the subject matter expert? Right? You have to prove it because now they're going to go through look at that evaluation see who's best for the job and then customer support say your team you've built a wonderful business and you want to make sure that you're handling your customers with care having that support for them that that they can get whether it's a live person or some kind of tickets and queries that they know that they've connected with someone how many times we've been on the phone and we're trying to get somebody we're already frustrated we're upset we hit one they put us to two then from two to four you've been up 30 minutes later you still haven't got a human being oh my goodness and then so now you're fuming and then you know now and when we're fuming we're what can be unrational and they could be a good organization but so you have to think about your customer support the client care is so important and event planning so like me i love to have workshops i love to have events then i'm going to hire someone to do my event planning i'm not doing the event planning i focus on core competencies i'm doing business development i'm doing capture management i'm doing proposal writing those are my core and i'm teaching and training my small businesses how to do that and only way i can do that is not being the door i am the overseer i oversee all of these operations so i can do what i am good at what is my passion and what i love to do and then as you grow you're going to need translation services a lot of you have international businesses international markets you're going to want to get your stuff uh trans um related into spanish or any other language and all that you want to give that to some an expert to do so i hope this video was helpful you and just um if you have any comments please leave them in the comments below because i'm trying to build the content i am building a resource for small businesses in my community the underserved um community who doesn't have the capital and the the resources or the staff that large or even established mid-sized businesses do when you're first transitioning from nine to five that employee mindset you tend to bring that over to business business owner mindset and you have to get out of that you're no longer an employee you are a employer you're going to be employing 
people and subcontractors. I practice what I preach. If I'm a subcontractor looking to work with prime contractors, then that's who I'm hiring. I'm hiring other subcontractors. I'm a subcontractor tier one, they're a subcontractor tier two. But many a times we won't even give that small business the opportunity to grow their craft because we don't want to assume the risk. Well, guess what? You have to assume the risk to grow our community. You have to employ other subcontractors and let them perform. And if they do not perform correctly, then give them assessment. This is what you need to work on. Just like a CPARS. Remember, we're growing a community of small businesses. So you have to teach them just like the government does. They give you a contract performance assessment report. That's your report card. That's how you've been doing. Well, you've been late every month. Your invoicing is not to standard. Well, guess what? How are they going to know? You didn't even give them a CPARS. You didn't give them, you told them nothing. You just fired them. And I've been guilty of that. You know, I've been guilty of not giving CPARS contract assessment, you know, the contract performance assessment reports. But now I give it because it's important that they know where the, their strengths are, but it's important that they know what their weaknesses are. So either they're going to outsource that weakness or they're going to improve that weakness so that way they can give the client what they need. Our, we are in the service business. So we are into taking care of our clients and servicing our clients, but it's got to be a win-win. If it's a win-lose, move on, move on, because you won't be happy at that job. You won't do it with the spirit of excellence. You won't do it 100% of the time. You'll be one foot in the door and one foot out of the door. Every job I go to, I want to be excited to go. I want to give all that I can to make that business better. I hope this was good to you. Take care and see you in the next video. Have a good one.